Today, I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with both Jack Lifton and Tom Dreyfus of Appia Energy. How are you both today? Great, Tracy. Good, thank you, Tracy. The reason that we're doing this particular update today is we want to talk about all of the interest that we are currently getting on the Saskatchewan Research Council, or as we call it, of course, the SRC, and the government of Saskatchewan announcing their plan to develop a first of its kind rare earth processing facility. Now this obviously impacts all of us in the rare earth space, especially in North America. And I'd like to start with you, Jack. What are your thoughts on this announcement? I think it's uh, very good uh, that the SRC has done this be because this is the first time this has been done in North America in quite some time. And basically, I'm, I'm not familiar with the people, the SRC, but I know about it from uh, hearing about it from people like Tom. Um, it's, there are two things happening here. The, the Saskatchewan Research Council is not just working on rare earths. It's quite a large organization and it works uh, primarily on natural resources, I believe, based in Saskatchewan. And what most of our viewers do not know, especially outside of Canada, is how, how much Saskatchewan is involved in uranium, rare earths, oil. It, it is a major player on the world stage. In, in America, it's unknown. So this this was a very good thing for the, for the Saskatchewan government to promote. And I understand they're going to, they have significant resources of experienced people who are looking at, at rare, rare earths in two, th two ways. One, I understand that they're looking at processes for extracting the rare earths from ores and, and concentrating them. And two, they, they actually are planning to build a separation plan, a solvent extra, uh, extraction system that will separate the rare earths into, into their individual components. Now, as much as we talk about this, there is no such pilot plant or, or pre-production plant in North America at this point in time. These, the Saskatchewan Research Council has the background. It's going to make the premier plant of its type, and, and so and so, I the focus on this is you know advantage Canada, as they say in other games, and then I think this is a very positive thing, and I think the Canadian companies that are associated with the SRC are are going to be the leading companies in Canada in the rare space. Of course, Tom, we'd love to hear what you think because, of course, one of your primary projects, Alsis Lake, is in Saskatchewan. We're quite excited, uh, Tracy. Uh, this is um, this is was a, a very it's a very good announcement, very positive announcement. Not only for Apia that has a, a, a high grade rare earth project right in Saskatchewan, but for the entire industry, and I think for uh, for North America. Well, I think there's something also additionally interesting about this, and I would like both of your comments on this, and of course it'll be a surprise who I ask first. Um, Investor Intel, for the first time ever, had a, an announcement, an update on this particular news, and we related it to Appia's uh, How Close You Are, Your Proximity, Tom, and you were immediately trending number one within 12 hours. Everyone seemed to find this interesting. Now, can you tell us why people are finding this so interesting? Is there something we should know, uh, Tom, or can you comment on that? Well, um, I really don't know why people would find it uh, that interesting, but I can comment, um, um, Tracy. Um, Apia could not um, hope for better news. Um, we're um, having a, a rare earth processing plan in Saskatchewan in the same area where we are and in the same jurisdiction is um, a game changer uh, and uh, I think it's going to benefit tremendously Apia and its uh, shareholders. And of course, what do you think, Jack? I think there might be something a little bit more exciting there 
Uh, can you comment on maybe everyone well, in the rare earth industry is thinking maybe we're going to get this to the next level? The, the point is that the, the, the plant that uh, SRC is building is the next step or steps downstream from the mine. So, in, in other words, the, the total supply chain is a building, in, in, so to say. And, and I do want to inject one thing. Um, I understand that our audience is mainly American and Canadian here, and probably Australia. Uh, but you, have, you cannot discount Europe. Europe is actually looking at Canada right now as a, as a potential source of rare earths. And it's my understanding, this is not a secret, I, I spoke with him in London a couple of weeks ago, and he said that they're thinking in, in Europe, they have metal making, alloy making, and magnet making. In fact, in, in that, they're the only ones currently in the West outside of Japan that have that. And they're think, the, I understand that some Canadian government officials are thinking we should ask those people if we can license those technologies and build plants in Canada. Why not? Canada makes millions of cars, appliances, aircraft, all needing rare earth permanent magnets. So one thing that was missing is the separation plan. So th this, this announcement couldn't be more timely for everybody, for the U.S., yes, even for Europe. And, and so, uh, Tom, the fact that your, your deposits are right there, so to speak, uh, I think is, is a very positive thing because, as we all know in the mining game, uh, distance and transportation costs are, are a killer. And uh, I admit it's not an easy a trek from, from your site to SRC site, but it's a hell of a lot closer than going overseas or into the States. Speaking of easier, Tom, I want to congratulate you on your statement uh, that you recently put out. You said, this is a highly significant announcement as it has enormous potential to benefit Appia down the track, as they can potentially leverage of what is already provided by the local government. The facility is planned to be operational in late 2022 and will be capable of processing both hard rock ores and converting them into sellable individual rare earth oxides. Now what I'd like to point out, and I'd like to have both of your comments on, is the monazite advantage. I had several interviews this week where everyone talking to me said, hey, the fast track to getting rare earths supplied in North America, besides uh, sourcing them in China, of course, is monazite. Tom, how about you address that first? Um, it's uh, uh, monazite is actually one of the um, the better source of uh, extracting uh, rare earths. It's uh, the technology is known, and and um, obviously uh, Apia has uh, one of the highest grade. Uh, uh, monazite occurrence in the world. We're getting up to 85% monazite right on, on surface. And uh, so, and the SRC plan will be processing um, uh, definite uh, uh, monazite. So, but in terms of the, the fact that we are, um, uh, we have this plan to, uh, that is going to be built in the next couple of years. They're actually starting this, uh, this fall and it's supposed to be completed by, by 2022 and operational. It, it's, it's great news. Uh, it's very significant for us, for, for Apia, because it could save a lot of time and money for us. Uh, we don't have to spend the money and the time to permit, um, uh, 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 build, um, and, uh, and uh, uh, staff and, and operate a plan, um, especially at the beginning. So, and, and we, can, we can benefit tremendously from the uh, extensive expertise that, that SRC has on extracting um, uh, uh, uranium, uh, sorry, uh, rare earths and uranium from, from a monazite. So, um, it, it is, uh, it, it is uh, as I mentioned before, it is a, a game changer. And uh, as Jack mentioned before, distance in, in, in mining and in every operation is it's very, uh, very important because of the cost. But another factor is regulation. 
you know, we're in the same jurisdiction, you know, and and as you know, uh, you know, rare earths, uh, you know, they're they're associated somehow with uh, uranium and thorium, and and Saskatchewan is one of the better um, jurisdictions to deal with that. So, and and SRC is licensed to uh, uh, handle uh, nuclear and 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 uh, and uh, uh, uranium, thorium, and material. So it's it's uh, it, it is uh, ex- excellent for Apia and obviously for the industry. And Jack, how about you just give us kind of a conclusion on that particular topic because we both know well, you like monazite. Yeah, it comes down to this: monazite is is really would be the best. Uh, or we of rare earths we could process, and the problem is in the United States we don't we're limited in our resources of monazite. Uh, Canada clearly uh, Appia has found quite a bit more in its high grade. Uh, I remind uh, the viewers that uh, Linus is a monazite project, and and that's the largest uh, you know flow through system one mine company in the world in rare earths. Uh, why aren't we mining monazite? Answer, the radioactivity in the monazite prevents uh, people from uh, processing it because it takes years to get such a license and you really actually have to know what you're doing, which is another problem. Now, the SRC and the Saskatchewan government solve that problem for companies like Appia. Uranium City is nearby. They 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 handle uranium. Uh, they they handle thorium. They know what to do with it, and they legally dispose of it. So, if in Canada, uh, Saskatchewan is the ideal place to process monazite. It's it's, it's perfect. I uh, can't say any more. Okay, so Tom, everybody's looking at Appia. Any final thoughts or comments about this? It sounds to me like Saskatchewan and the SRC are solving a lot of problems for you and making you exceedingly competitive. If you weren't already competitive, of course, before. Again, um, our uh, our um, uh, uh, plan is to um, uh, jumpstart this uh, Aussie Lake project into development and. Uh, we have been actively exploring, obviously with COVID-19, where it's a shorted season this year, but we managed to do like a two-phase exploration program. The first phase, um, it consisted of geophysics and, and, and um, uh, ex- uh, surface mapping and, and, and sampling. And this, it was very successful because we're, we initially we were looking at a very small area of the property. The property is 43,000 acres. And Initially, we had looked at, at uh, two, three hundred meters by five hundred meters area, and this summer we were able to expand that to forty kilometer strike. And within that that forty kilometer strike that we see rare earth and uranium occurrences, we have seen so far seventy four surface occurrences, uranium and rare earth occurrences. And so, so it, it has uh, a, a great uh, potential. You know, the project has has the it, 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 it's huge, and 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 we're we're very excited. Now the second program was to to, to do exploration uh, drilling, and to test this geophysics, and we do expect results from from the drilling, and we'll be uh, issuing it, uh, you know, releasing it once uh, we receive them and analyze them. So we're we're quite excited. You know, we're committed to um, possibly develop the next. Uh, main uh, high-grade critical air source in North America. Tom, I'd like to thank you for joining us today to talk to us about the SRC announcement. Uh, as well, Jack, I'd like to thank you, but I'm not going to let you get off this easily, Jack. What I'd like you to do is just mention a couple more monazite projects that maybe, or monazite technologies we might be looking at since uh, this topic has been brought up today. The, it's no secret, I think, that the U.S. company Energy Fuels is looking at processing monazite at their White Mesa, Utah site, which I believe is the only uranium processing site now operating in the United States. Of course, it's licensed also. Um, 
quite frankly, in an ideal world where there were no borders, uh, Appia would be the ideal supplier of material to, to that site. Um, it, in the real world, I'm sure Appia will, will be considered as a supplier, and at the time, there's, there's more than one customer. But quite frankly, the truth is, if you start producing concentrate, you can sell all of it to our friends in China. They're buying this kind of thing is ideal for them. They, they're buying 20,000 tons net of TREO from MP, and that's bastinocyte ore. It's concentrated, but it's bastinocyte, which has about half of the magnet materials in it per kilogram that your material has. So guess which one they would like to buy? <laughs> okay. So, and I believe that you will find Europeans who are interested, and I know there are Americans that are interested. So I, I really see a rosy future for your company. Can I make one comment? I understand uh, from speaking to your uh, outstanding geo, uh, James Sykes, that you're contemplating surface mining or near surface mining. So you, you, you won't run into the immense costs of, of mining deep underground. Is that correct? Uh, so far, Jack, we we got uh, uncover six at least six zones. Uh, 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 mo most of them are on surface or, or within 10, 20 meters yeah. surface. So it basically mm -hmm. it, it, it's a, a quarry operation so far. So you know the mining costs will be minimal. Uh, as, mm -hmm. uh, as we talked before, we 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 have seen um, um, uh, our, our average grade between all the drilling that we've done and all the, the surface channel samples that I've done, when we average them all up, uh, we, we're getting, um, from all those zones, we're getting about 16.6% um, uh, weight percent um, uh, uh, total rare earth oxide. Uh, we've seen uh, grades as, as high as 49% uh, total rare earth oxide, and about a quarter of that is, is the critical material, which is neodymium, uh, 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 price of demand and, and, and so uh, for the magnets. So we're it, it, the mining is not a is not a big uh, issue for us so far that we've seen. Yeah. It's, and and um, we're very close to infrastructure. We're, as I mentioned before, we're, we're only about 30 kilometers northeast of Uranium City. Between us and Uranium City, there were there were some old mines, or so there's halfway there's roads, and we can have winter road access. So. Uh, and we, there's an airport there, an airstrip, and, and, and there's a mining community, which is great. Gentlemen, thank you so much. And uh, we look forward to uh, getting regular updates for both Appia Energy. And, of course, thank you so much, Jack, as always. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Appreciate it.